All right, and my name's Alexander. Um, this is the day after Eldritch Moon release, and I pre-ordered this booster box of Eldritch Moon, and we're gonna open it. And when we're opening it, we're gonna play a little game that I like. What's in the box? <laughs> and basically, what happens is me, my friend Ben, and my friend Lewis uh, came up with lists, and we're trying to guess what the rares inside of the booster box of Eldritch Moon is. Uh, there are 38 regular rare guesses because there are flip rares in this set that come in the pack with normal rares. And then we each got five guesses for what we think the foil rares are going to be. Um, every time a rare is guessed correctly, the little thing at the top of the screen is going to go up by one. So if you know we get it wrong or whatever, you should have been able to see the list pop up a second ago. And if we're wrong, go ahead and correct us because congratulations, nerd on the internet. You check thing. All right, we're going to open the box now. Whee! Uh, feels good, man. Gotta love that plastic wrap. <laughs> uh, Got to do this or doing it wrong. Isn't there supposed to normally be a little thing sitting on top of here? Sometimes it's at the bottom. Okay, right, right. whatever. All right, let us uh, begin. We're gonna do the uncommons and then the rare. So, I'm not so we're skipping commons, okay? Yeah, skipping commons. All right, so we got rise from the grave. The Long Road Home, Chilling Grasp, and our first is a Crypt Breaker. Woo! Woohoo! Zombie Tribal. You tap it, discard a card to make a zombie. Uh, tap three zombies, you draw a card, and you lose a life. I'm not super good about this card. And a Smoldering Werewolf. Oh, and a Foil in the first pack. Cool, Foil of Brazen Wolves. But a uh, Smoldering Werewolf for our flip card. And there we go. That was the first pack. Yes. 35 to go. Alright, so let's see here. We got Abandoned Reason, Emrakul's Influence, one of the worst cards that they could have printed in the set, especially for Limited, Mercurial Geist, and a Collective Defiance. Sick! One and two reds with Escalate, one, one generic mana. Choose one or more. Target player discards all cards in his or her hand, then draws that many cards. Uh, card deals four damage to target creature, or it deals three damage to target opponent. You can do all this. Card is the best one in standard. Flip card is Curious Homunculus. Oh! Flip Ulrich of the Kralinord. Feels good, man. Got ourselves a nice little mythic foil right there. Oh, it's foil? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm retarded. No, you're fine. <laughs> what is it? just flip mythic. Oh, okay, wait. What does it do? Uh, whenever it hits the battlefield or it flips into Ulrich of the Crown Horde, target creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. It flips over like regular werewolves should, where if nothing happens, it flips over. Then when it flips over, it, um, it fights a thing. And it's a 6-6, six, six, so it's probably going to win. Which makes it a really good card. I mean, not bad for second pack. Yeah, oh, so, yeah second pack. Alright. We got a Ruthless Disposal, a Blood Mist, Deranged Welt, and an Eldritch Evolution. This Sick. card is going to see multi-format play. That. As an additional cost to cast it, you sack a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, where X is 2 plus to sacrifice creatures converted mana cost, put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Exile this card. It's, uh, what was, what was the card from New Phyrexia or whatever it was? Birthing Pod. It's yeah, one, it's, it's a one-off birthing. birthing Pod. And then Grizzled Angler is the flip card. Oh, nothing. oh, and this sweet zombie token for the card with my favorite artwork in the set being Soul Separator. So, best part about Grizzled Angler is if you, so if you look at the back of it, the angler part is actually the guy's head. Oh my gosh, it is. That's so freaky. Holy crap. Here. It's always nice when you can make three dollars turn to eight. Oh yeah. So the artwork for this card reminds me of that song that uh, was like Justin Bieber and Will. Those. This one that Justin Bieber and Will I Am like collaborated on because his mouth is just like, hey little mama, how you doing? Let me whisper in your ear. <laughs> like it's just it's so freaky. So prying questions. Campaign of Vengeance. Abundant Mall. Hey, we were just talking about Soul Separator. I love Sick. this card. So, it's three mana, artifact, five and you tap it, sacrifice it, exile target creature card from your graveyard, put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1-1, it's a spirit in addition to its other types. Uh, it has flying, 
Put a black zombie creature token onto the battlefield with power equal to that card's toughness. Power and toughness equal to the card's toughness. So I really like kind of like the flavor of it because like the abilities are in the soul, which is like supposed to be like yeah. the mind of it, and then just like the base body is just like the base body of the thing. So do you think it's gonna see play with trio trio petition? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, and then we got Kessig Prowler. Um, it flips over, and does things. Is that the uncommon one to get the flips for one green? Yeah. That one's pretty good. It's all right for five mana. Like it, these cards are just, like mana sinks for the late game essentially. So, like, you don't mind having them, but I'd rather not. Mm -hmm. Or you could play a Waxing Moon. All right, we got For Fortune's Favor, which is a slightly worse um, fact of fiction. Guy's Fueled Scarecrow, Crop Sigil, and a Stromkirk Condemned. Nice. Uh, so two black, discard a card. Vampires you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. I don't think this is a horrible card. It could have been a little better if you could have done it multiple times. That would have probably pushed the yeah. entire tribal, tribal into... I mean, it's a solid so, two-drop. Yeah, I guess. For zombie... I'm sorry, vampires. Yeah, and then we got Olvenwald Captive, which is like the weird furry bondage card, which is just creepy as hell. Furry bondage card? I think so. It's a wolf, and it's just like trapped by vines. It's like, oh my, please help me, Mr. Summoner. <laughs> I love it. Come to my call. I love, I love making fun of furries. It's my favorite thing to do. Um, we got a Thirsting Axe, Blessed Alliance, another Mercurial Geist, and a Stitcher's Graft. Uh, it's one mana, equipped creature gets plus three, plus three. Whenever a crit creature attacks, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. And whenever this card becomes unattached from a permanent, sacrifice that permanent. Um, if you could equip this to your opponent's creature, yeah. it would be infinitely better. It would probably be standard playable, too. But sadly, they decided to make it suck. Oh, yeah. I asked a judge so, during the pre-release, and it was... Yeah, you cannot equip that to your opponent's creatures. That blows. And then we got a Tangle Claw Werewolf. Ooh, and a Foil Grapple with the Past, which is just, like, some of the most depressing artwork. Like, I have a, I have a particular weakness for stuffed animals, and it just saddens me that this small child is reaching into the well to grab, like, the stuffed animal of its past. Well, you know it's, um, so it's going back to make a wish, or yeah, whatever it's called. Yeah, I know, I know what it's supposed to be doing, but, like, it, it just saddens me, you know? No, I gotcha. That child didn't have her stuffed animal in our look, though, so... I know it's supposed to be, like, a callback to it. Yeah, it I gotcha. Um, Haunted Dead, Campaign of Vengeance... Insatiable Gorgers, which I think is supposed to be like the incorrigible youths grown up or something like that. Oh. Uh, and then Lupine Prototype. Sick. So when it, it can't attack or block unless the player has no cards in hand. It's two generic mana for a 5-5. Five five. Um, if you can ditch your hand, it's not a bad card. I mean, it might see play an affinity. It's a mecha. It's a two, yeah, it's a two, is it, what is it, two drop 5-5, uh, five five, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it might see affinity play. Golden Pack Outcast. I mean, you know how how new sets are. Everyone tries to jam everything to different formats. Yeah. All right, we got Guy Shield Scarecrow. I love the artwork for this, <laughs> just because of the thing attached to its back. Honestly, Fortune's Favor, Somberwald Stag, and a Collective Effort. So it's the White Collective, whatever, like Collective Defiance, Collective Effort, like. So for one and two white, with an escalate of top and untap creature you control, choose one or more. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. Destroy target enchantment. Or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls. I think it's okay. It would have been broken as hell if they'd made it instant speed, so I don't blame yeah. them for making sorcery speed. But it's it's still a really good card. And even though it's kind of low on the totem pole, I think it's going to see play. Well, think about this. Like, we're getting rid of Dramokas Command, or we're getting this. That's true. That's true. So... I feel like it's gonna see play. Graph, graph rats, and I just wh originally I thought like the whole artwork was gonna be on the back of him for these things, but I guess yeah, not. but that's all right. I don't mind. It's not a. It's all right. A two one that I don't know. It's just a two one for two. The other part's pretty great because you can just play that in any like limited deck and just yeah. get back your Thermo Alchemist is broken. Play this. Oh limited. no, this card's stupid good. Play Delver. Always fun. All right, repel the abominable, which is kind of like a. Um, a fog it's a fog for human decks so it might see other format play uh shreds of sanity dark feaster and a strong kirk cultist i play this in limited a l i've i've had this a lot at pre-release and i played it last night at fnm so it's actually a good card if you can get it to survive 
Um, trample, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. So, for people watching this who want to figure out when to use this card in Limited, if you can manage to get the make sure if you can get the damage through with this thing, be sure that you don't play your land for turn. Like, because if you exile just a land off the top of your deck, you can just play it, and you have a land in your hand that you can just kind of throw away for, like, a met, for, like, you know, a generic throw a card away kind of effect. So it's like a bad habit of uh, Carol Keep, right? Yeah. yeah, essentially. And then we have Midnight Scavengers, which is the other half of the Graph Rats, and if we can dig it up, then, um... We can play Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah! Fusion! Polarization, go! My, I, I, I want to find Fusion Gate. It's gotta be in there somewhere. Cathar Shield, it's okay in limited. I don't think it's super great, but whatever. Yeah. Mockery of Nature, Emerge is a super busted ability. Long Road Home, Vampire Cutthroat, and a Deploy the Gatewatch! Woohoo! The Junk Mythic of the set. Look at the top seven cards of your library. Put up to two Planeswalker cards from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your order in any random order, like... It blows for four and two white, like... See, you say... Slaver, yeah. You... You say uh, junk uh, rare of the set. I don't think you've seen Providence. I have. Uh, okay, the junk mythic then. Whatever you want to call it. It's bad. And then Lone Rider, which I think is infinitely better. Like, I'd rather have this card than that card, honestly. I think it's a really good card. If, if there can be a life gain deck constructed around this thing, then it's going to be busted as hell. Because this is actually a really good card. And I want to see it played a lot. Especially with, like, Rest in Peace. Or not rest in peace. Um, peace of mind. Peace of mind. Yeah, because it's like one one white. Flip that card over into a four 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 first striking life linker. Like. I mean, Soren gains you life pretty easily. That's true, but it's six mana. Hmm. All right, Savage Alliance, Nefalia Academy. Card's great. Dark, Dusk Feaster and a summary dismissal. And yeah. that card is busted. Is it? Can't confirm last night. It will see play in the blue white spirit deck. Um. Yeah. Cause think about it, it counters your um, spell quellers. It counters um, your um, reflector mage. It counters a That's lot of true. stuff. It gets around a lot of stuff in the format right now. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, it seems pretty. It, it seems what's pretty that, great. What's that in the art? Is that like the vacuum it's, from Luigi's Mansion? Or it might be. <laughs> it looks more like the Ghostbusters yeah, thing, yeah. but you know. No, nah, no. Nah, well, nah. we're not going to talk about Ghostbusters. And the flip is a Vilden Pack Outcast. More packs! Aw, oh, yeah. I love opening booster packs. Orgasmic. Simply... Or Terrarium is such a good card. Holy crap, this card's busted as hell. Limited. Ruthless Disposal, Blessed Alliance, Drog School, Shieldmate, and an Oath of Liliana. Uh, when it hits the battlefield, each opponent sacks a creature. At the beginning of each end step, if the Planeswalker entered the battlefield under your control this turn, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Um... It's not the worst Oath. I guess. I mean... I feel like Oath of Gideon's a little bit worse. Just a little bit. I would prefer... I, I'd still prefer it if it said whenever a Planeswalker uses an ability instead of, like, when it enters the battlefield, but, you know... Mm-hmm. Ovenwald Captive, our good old-fashioned furry... furry bondage card. Like that, uh, what was that in Eternal Masters, the the root out or something like that? It was a Minotaur. Oh, yeah. Like, literally, it was like Hentai, the magic card. It was great. I mean, there's been a few of those. <laughs> but this one was like particularly, like, Whispers of Immercruel, Vampire Cutthroat, Ride Down, Spirit of the Hunt. Now, this guy is dressed up as a wolf. I will have, hear nothing else of it. Um, Flash for one and two green. Uh, when Spirit of the Hunt enters the battlefield, each other creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf gets plus O plus three until end of turn. If you're in wolf or werewolf tribal, have fun with this card, because it's the only place it's ever going to be played. I mean, it's fun and limited. I guess. Midnight Scavengers flip card. I mean, literally just in limited. <laughs> that's the only place. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of miss the good old days of um, Huntmaster of the Fells. Oh, yeah. Uh, that was a great card. Alright, Thirsting Axe, Chilling Grasp, Somber Walled Stag. Hey! We got it! Cruel, baby! 13 mana for a legendary creature, Eldrazi. Screw you for being on Innistrad, by the way. I hate you for that. And we're cool, the Promised End costs one less to cast for each card type among cards in your graveyard, so you want to play this in a Delirium deck. 
Whenever you cast Hammer Curl, you gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn. After that turn, the player takes an extra turn. Flying Trample, protection from instance, and Enigma as vexing as life itself. Woo! It's a great card. Extractor of Sins is the flip card. Decent card and limited. Yeah, it's okay. I, I mean, like the, I like Avicennia missionaries more. That was that was a lot better. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I I don't know. I feel like I I really wish they would not change the whole mind slayer thing where you can't go through cyborgs. But yeah. All right, we have guys to the lonely vigil, lunar force, draw school shield mate, and identity thief. Woo! Uh, two and two blue. Whenever it attacks, uh, keyword attack, which makes it bad. You may exile another target, an untoken creature. If you do, it becomes a copy of that creature until end of turn. Turn the exile card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. This card's a pain in the butt to play in limited if your opponent has a lot of enter the battlefield kind of trigger creatures. So, Somebody should have bought life luck. <laughs> <laughs> Wolvenwald captive, furry bondage. Hey, we got the Liliana emblem, though. All right, so, we just get, so all we need is yeah, Lily. Yeah, now all we need is the Liliana. There we go. Are we gonna get it? We're only like halfway through the box, so. We only have two foils so far, it's really weird to me, but hey. Eh. Who knows? Who knows? Alright, so another thing, if you if you have emerge creatures in your deck, play the living crap out of this guy, because he's four mana for an O2 and a 3-2, and then you just sack him to like your emerge creature, because he's not doing anything. Other than like a chump blocker. Uh Blood Mist, Markov Crusader, John Yard Behemoth. Hey, Grim Flayer! Yeah! Awesome. Um, people speculate on this card. I'm not confident in it, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Um, one black and one green for a Trample Human Warrior. Whenever Grim Flayer deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of your library, put any of them into your graveyard, and the rest back on top of your library in any order. Uh, Delirium, it gets plus two, plus two, as long as there are four more card types among cards in your graveyard. So, it's a potential two mana, four, four. I'm still not completely convinced in it, but okay. I mean, it's a bear that gets a little bit better. Yeah. Crypto of the Fragment is just a way to ping your opponent down, because I guess it's... it's it it won me a lot of games in pre-release. Did it? Yeah. Well, I mean, like, the any color mana thing is good. I got screwed over at FNM by it, because uh, someone played that that spirit, the three mana, two, two flying spirit, that's like one in a blue uh, return card to, like, your opponent's hand or something. Hey, oh, oh. An unsubstantiated... That card exists. Freaking bomb. Uh, return target spell or creature to its opponent owner's hand. That's awesome. Uh, we got a crop sigil, drown yard behemoth, and a wharf infiltrator. Um, it's two mana with skulk. Uh, whenever wharf in infiltrator deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Uh, whenever you discard a creature card, you may pay two. If you do, put a three-two colorless cell draws a horror creature token onto the battlefield. This forces your opponent to blow the removal really quick because they yeah. do not want to deal with this stupid thing. Alright, Conduit of Storms. Hey, a Foil of Scum to Temptation. Alright, so I'm going to put this out there for the internet. This is, quite literally, and I use this in the most literal sense of the term, the gayest card ever. Because this is definitely a male prostitute, and this vampire is definitely about to get his dick on. So, <laughs> like, there's no way... <laughs> I mean, card is super great. Oh you can God. leave up murder me? mana, leave up ruinous path mana. This card, that draw two cards and definitely gonna in like, play, like their instep. All right, then... we got rise from the grave, Hamlet captain, subjugator angel, and a sanctifier of souls. The intro de white intro deck rare. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one plus one until the end of turn. So it's like the opposite of prowess. Um, for two and a white, exile a creature card from your graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token flying onto the battlefield. It's okay. I like it. I'd play it, definitely. I mean, intro pack rares do what intro pack rares do. Yeah. Alright, and here's Graf Rats. Oh, hey! Handware Garrison. That mm -hmm. card's stupid busted and limited. Because you just... It's like... Every time it attacks, it, it freaking turns itself basically into a 4-5. So... It's like worse Goblin Rattle Master. Pretty much, yeah. And then Graf Rat, so I was holding this guy off to the side so we could do this for people who haven't, who have yet to see this kind of thing happen. This is what we have to deal with in Eldritch Moon. <laughs> we have to make these kinds of cards come together. That's some Pokemon nonsense right there. <laughs> Polymerization not needed. For real, though. Another pack, another pack. Alright, we have a Slayer's Cleaver, Markov Crusader, a Mourn Willow. Emrakul's Evangel. I think this is an okay card. It's not great, but it's okay. 
Um, three, two for two and a green. Tap it, sacrifice it, and any number of non Eldrazi creature tokens. Put a 3 2 colorless Eldrazi horror creature token on the battlefield for each creature sacrificed this way. This is kind of like your impromptu way of dealing with, with mass removal. So. I yeah, I didn't think about like that before, but you're right. But I, I don't imagine there's a whole bunch of mass removal. And Ulvenwald Captive with the best zombie artwork, or the best zombie token artwork here in the set. There are foil versions of that one if you want to pre release. Or if you can find the uh, deck builder things or whatever, whatever they're called, pre-release packs. Geist of the Lonely Vigil, Deranged Welt, another Mourn Willow, and a Permeating Mass. The card is so much fun. It's fun. Is it good, though? That's my question. I mean, it's I saw good. a lot of testing decks within the sideboard, but I don't think it's going to actually see play. Yeah, me either. So for one green, it's a 1-3. Whenever it deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of Permeating Mass, which means that they have a Permeating Mass that they can block with and turn your things into it, which is why I don't think it's a very good card. Um, just go ahead and move a couple of these. Are you really worried about a 1-3, though? Not not really, but like it, it can block your ground dudes so and make it annoying in a Shrill Howler that turns over into that thing. Next... Alright, uh, prying questions. Guys, the archives. I really like that card. Noose Constrictor. Hey, and we got a mythic, the Mirror Wing Dragon. Uh, three generic and two red for a flying dragon. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only this card, that player copies that spell for each other creature he or she controls that a spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. So basically, what this saying is if you pump this, all your creatures pump this. If your opponent attempts to use targeted removal on it, they kill all of their creatures. Yeah. That's alright. I can deal with that. I mean, it's a Storm Breath Dragon, but I'll take it. Yep. Vilden Pack Outcast. Hey, Handware Battlement. So we got both halves of uh, of this card now. Where'd it go? There it is. Handware Ga Garrison. Now we got the Big Wandering Town. This was like the third card they spoiled, wasn't it? it yeah, I... I really like the art on the flips. It's alright. It's okay. I mean, I, I think I prefer just the regular artwork for Handware Gar Garrison over it, but who knows? Who cares? who cares what old Alexander cares about? Alright, we have Nubble Gas Herald. Now, when you play this card, you'll be tempted to think that it keeps the creature tap, that it taps down until your opponent it skips the, the next untap step. But it doesn't, so keep it in mind, because that's the way I played it, and I was wrong. News Constrictor, Guys to the Archives, and Imprisoned in the Moon! Uh, enchanted Creature, Land, or Planeswalker. Uh, enchanted Permanence is a colorless land. It turns into a waste, basically. Um, for two and a blue, eh, it's okay, it's suitor removal. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, but who knows. Eh. Who knows. Tangle Claw Werewolf with a bug token. Cards, cards, I love me some cards. Fur Fury Blade Vampire, Weaver of Lightning, Subjugator Angel, and a Blood Hall Priest. Uh, it has madness for one, one black and one red. So basically it just cuts off one generic mana from the regular casting cost. For Vampire Cleric, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, if you have no cards in hand, it deals two damage to target creature or player. Eh... I feel like I should have got in on this list thing because I named all these cards on the way here. Good job. Literally, I was just like, it's going to be this, and this, I mean, and this. I mean, all you really have to do is guess all the worst cards in the set. Like, if you set your expectations low from the beginning, you're really not. Like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're gonna, likely to get somewhere. Hey, another unsubstantiate. Uh, that card apparently exists. <laughs> Give no ground. I like this card, actually. Hey, murder! That's the Ooh. first murder we've gotten, isn't it? Really? Yeah. And then, um, Ulvenwald Observer, which is the intro deck rare for green. Whenever a creature you control with toughness four greater dies, draw a card. I guess I can put this in my Dolan the Meme Tower deck. Like, and another Lone Rider, which is good, because I'm thinking about putting a deck together with this. So, we haven't opened a Planeswalker yet, kind of hoping for at least one, but, you know, you get what you get and you shouldn't give a darn. 
Graft Harvest, Scour the Laboratory, Hamlet Captain, Heron's Grace Champion. This card is probably going to see playing Green White Humans. Uh, two generic and a green and a white for a human knight with flash and lifelink. And whenever it hits the battlefield, um, other humans you control get plus one, plus one in lifelink until end of turn. For a 3 3, that's pretty solid. I really wouldn't mind playing that, or at least sideboarding it. Graph Rats and a foil Drown Yard Behemoth. That reminds me, we haven't gotten a foil, um, we haven't gotten our foil rare yet. It'd be a little salty. How many packs we have left? Uh, I think like two and a half more rows, it looks like. So, okay, like, so we, got, we have a Weevil while. Shot. Yeah, two, two, two and a half rows. It's what, almost nine packs? Eight packs. We have a Mockery of Nature, Faith Unbroken, Stupid Busted and Limited, Narwood Dryad, and a Coax from the Blind Eternities. For two generic and a blue, for sorcery, you can choose an Eldrazi card you own from outside the game or in exile. Reveal that card and put it into your hand. I wish you could go any like go into your rare binder and just grab something out instead of it being in your sideboard. Because that just makes it infinitely less fun. It's like, ooh, what am I going to get? What am I going to get? You don't know. So it's like, nope, it's your sideboard. It has to be something that you open today. If you're unlimited. You have to have it pre-claimed if you're just playing it. Savage Alliance. Scour the Laboratory, Foul Emissary, and Eternal Scourge. Three generic, you can cast it from exile uh, whenever it becomes the target of a spell of ability and opponent controls. Exile it. Eh. I don't think it's going to go anywhere in any format. Scavengers. Can we talk about Foul Emissary real quick? The card is ridiculous. You get the impulse for a creature, and when you sacrifice it to get... Um, an emerge creature, you get a 3 2 Eldrazi. Ah, we'll dig it up someday. So it provides 3 mana for the casting cost of the emerge creature, and you get the impulse for a creature. Yeah, it's, it's alright. I mean. You, you gotta be playing an emerge deck if you wanna run at least one or two of those. Yeah. It goes good with that, uh, with the deranged maniac or whatever. Whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Enlightened maniac. Peace of mind, faith unbroken, Liliana's elite, and an elder deep fiend. This is just a great card. If you look at the artwork, this guy right here, he has a freaking spike through his head. That's dark. Alright, so 8 generic mana with flash and emerge. Emerge being 5 generic and 2 blue. Uh, whenever you cast it, tap up to 4 target permanents. It's alright, because it has flash and emerge. So you play it with uh, the, the foul emissary and you're doing alright. That, and if you have uh, Sanctum Vugans, you can just start chaining them together and just keep tapping down your uh, opponent's yeah. permanence. You're right. Cassic Prowler and a Foil Planes. Wah, wah. Pretty Planes. I'm, I'm getting a little itchy about this whole no foil rare yet thing. I'm sure you'll find one. God, I hope so. Guys Shield Scarecrow, Lashweed Lurker, Spreading Flames, and a new Scraft Mob. Uh, four generic, two black. Enters the battlefield with five 1-1 one, one counters on it. Whenever a player casts a spell, remove a 1-1 one, one counter from it. If you do, put a 2-2 two, two black zone, a creature token onto the battlefield. Basically, it doubles its own power over five different creatures every time someone casts a spell. So it's a really good card. The Curious Homunculus, that turns into a Voracious Reader, which is actually really neat artwork. So I like how we've gotten, I think we've now gotten all five intro factors. I think we have two. No, we haven't gotten Nibbles of Frost yet. Oh, okay. Close. We'll, we'll talk about that one if we get it. Shreds of Sanity, Courageous Outrider, Vexing Scuttler, Harmless Offering. Key! So two generic and a red. It's for a sorcery. Target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. People were talking about comboing this with demonic, uh, demonic pact. I didn't. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere because it takes like seven turns before it actually goes off to be good. It's a new Andrew, donate. I guess. Yeah. Conduit of storms. Best thing I can think about right now. At least we get cute artwork. I guess. Like, <laughs> such an adorable face. Lunar Force, Clear Shot, Vexing Scuttler, hey, another Soul Separator. We got two of them. Sweet. Uh, we've been over this card, so no need to talk about it again. And a Voldarn Pariah. We can talk about that one instead. Um, three generic and two black for a flying with madness for three black. Sacrifice three other creatures to transform it into Abolisher of Bloodlines. 
Flying, when it flips into this guy, target opponent sacrifices her creatures. Um, Aristocrats? Maybe. I don't know. You gotta have you gotta have a lot of creatures you're willing to kind of give up if you want to flip it over. I mean, so, we don't have Rally anymore, so we can't really do that path. But it, we still have Rally for one more thing, don't we? No, Rally was in uh, Fate, so it's out wait, now. Wait, it was? Mm hmm Oh, Rally Ancestors. My yeah, Rally bad. Ancestors. I was thinking Collected Company, my bad. Oh, you're good. That was in Dragons. Folly Academy, Ride Down, Insatiable Gorgers, Splendid Reclamation, three generic and a green for a sorcery to return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. You play this with the Get Good Frog. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> that's basically it. I mean, there's EDH decks you can play it in, like Borag Gromos who throws lands, um, Omnath who throws lands. Yeah. Old Basically it. Hey, there's our foil rare. El Eldritch Evolution. I dig it. I dig it. Sick. I like this card. Uh, we've been over it, but it's a dank-ass card, so we'll go over it again. Two green and a generic for a sorcery, and you, as an additional cost to cast it, you sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature, creature card with converted mana cost X or less, where X is 2 plus to sacrifice creatures converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library, exile Eldritch Evolution. So you can basically get like two turns ahead with this card. I like it. I dig it a lot. It's a good card. Alright, so I'm less itchy about the foil rare. We got it. We're good. We probably got all the all the mythic. Not a bad cards. one either. Oh yeah, definitely. It's better than a, probably a foil to play the gate watch. Foil Providence. There we go. Fortune's favor. Another murder. Foul Emissary. Whoop. Assembled Alphas. Um, this is the red one. We haven't opened this one yet either, so... Oh, okay. Extra wrong. Close. Alright, um, five generic and a red... I played this at pre-release. It's actually really good in pre-release, at least. Uh, wolf creature, whenever it blocks or becomes blocked, it deals three damage to target creature, or that creature, and three damage to that creature's player for a 5-5. Five five. It's good. It's good. This thing hits the field, like, your opponent's either gotta get rid of it or take nothing but damage. It's a 5-5 five five for six, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can play on curve with a lot they, of different things. And if things. they block, it does 8 damage to that creature. Like, most things aren't going to survive. Peace of Mind, Liliana's Elite, Lashweed Lurker, and a de Hey, another Mythic! I thought we were done with these. Crater Hoof! of Provinces, yeah! Slightly worse Crater Hoof. For 10 generic, or merge 6 and 3 green. Whenever you cast it, creatures you can control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Trample until end of turn as Trample and Haste for 7-7. Seven, seven. It's alright, it's alright. I can dig it. Uh, Cryptolith Fragment. All right, we're down to our last two packs, boys. No. Drum roll, please. All right. Repel the Abominable. Abundant Maw. Clear Shot. And another Strong Kirk Occultist. Uh, we've been over it. It's not super great. It's not going to go anywhere, but it's a cool card anyway. All right. Last pack. What do you guys think is going to be in it? Um, yes. let's see. I really want to be a douche and say Providence. What do you got, Ben? Um, well, it, uh, we pulled a lot of the ones I called. Let me think. I'm going to go out of limb and say Liliana. I want to say Selfless Spirit or Selfless Ghost. Oh, uh, yeah, called. yeah. All right, here we go, boys. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's slow roll this. Let's slow roll this one for, for the fans. For the Zero fans watching this video. That's right. This temperament of blood. Wretched girl. Good in when Kaladesh drops. So, and one last Lone Rider to send us off on our way. Alright, so this has been the box. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for, for watching this booster box video where one idiot opens it, but two idiots watch. Um, and. I had a good time at being yes. second idiot. <laughs> it's been a. It was an alright box. Uh, we got the emblem for Liliana, but sadly, sadly no Liliana itself. But, it, but we got a good foil rare, and we got a lot of really... We got uh, six mythics, so 
and they're not all bad mythics either. So thanks for watching, everyone, and yeah, good night.